Hello and welcome to the fourth video of this uh, series on creating uh, this IK arm. Uh, we're just going to continue on and we'll start by adding uh, elbow pinning. Uh, but before we do that I just wanted to show you that if we bring this IK out what we can do is we can blend now between stretchy and non-stretchy but we still keep the um, non-stretchy soft IK so we have soft IK, soft IK e either way, uh, stretchy or non-stretchy. Uh, again, before we add the pinning, there's one more thing I want to talk about. If I create some animation for this, and I'll just enable the animation trajectories on this bone, and we just pull this out, and actually let's turn off auto key, enable stretching, something like that. What you'll notice is, if you've got keen eyes, is that this curve comes down and then it dips in sort of an unnatural sort of way. We, what we'd want is this curve to keep on going like that, rather than coming and dipping down and flattening off. We'd want it to be a bit more smooth. And the reason it's doing this is actually because um, of the default position threshold values on the IK goal itself. It's nothing to do with what we've set up. It's actually something to do with what 3ds Max does by default. So we t we t uh, the way to change that is just to select the IK goal, head over to the motion tab of the command panel. Now let's zo zoom in so we can actually see the effect. Come down here, we have our threshold values, and lower values are more accurate. So I'll put a zero in here, and you can see it's got rid of that. We still have a tiny bit, I think we've got something a bit here, I mean it's so minute you're probably not going to see it, but you can add another zero there and now you can see that's it, that's it fine now. So now that's that's working really nicely. Okay, so that's that. Um, now what I want to do is um, get the pinning enabled on this as well. So what I'm going to do is define a new vil, uh, variable in our expression called pin len and that's going to be equal to the distance between the upper arm point and the elbow point for uh, this bone here so it's going to be these two here and again remember how elbow pinning works it works by, uh, I can actually just take off the check here, it works by uh, translating a child bone relative to these two distances and that's how we get the upper arm to actually stretch. So in the lower arm we want to calculate its distance based off these two points. And again we need to multiply this by our 100 divided by root scale so the um, scale doesn't affect it. And I'll initially say that pin is equal to bone length. So that's another variable, and immediately I'm saying the pin length is equal just to the, the bone length, which is this length here. But just as we did with the when we set up the uh, soft IK over here on the wrist point, if a condition, a certain condition is met, we're going to redefine this. So I'm going to say if pin len is greater than bone len then redefine pin to be equal to the pin len. Okay, so now what we have to do is include that in our expression. So this is when things begin to get a bit more complicated. So what we have to do is wrap our original expression in brackets or in parentheses and we have to use something called linear interp uh, interpolation uh, and that works just by multiplying our original expression by 1 minus pin p and pin p is the is not pin it's the actual attribute on the arm control here plus pin times pin p so what what is actually going on here? So if 
if pin P is equal to 0, which it currently is now, we've got this expression times 1 plus something times 0. So all we're going to be left with is this original expression. So that's fine, because we don't want the, the pinning to always happen. We want to be able to uh, blend between it uh, whenever we want to. However, if pin is equal to 1, what happens is here we have 1 minus pin P. That's equal to 0, so our original expression gets blown away. Plus pin times pin P. So pin P is equal to 1, so it's just going to return pin, which is equal to the pin length. Excuse me, which is equal to the distance between these two objects. So let's evaluate that. And let's see initially what happens. We need to set it up on the wrist as well for it to work properly, but you can see what's happening. So let's just do the same over here. Pin len is equal to the distance between, and now we're not going to do it between the upper arm point and the elbow point, we're going to do it between the elbow point and not the wrist, but the soft blend point. And the reason we do it between the soft blend point is because, well, the soft blend point can be blended between stretchy, being stretchy and non-stretchy. So if we did it for the, the wrist point, we could only, well, the the pinning would be affected because the the wrist doesn't stretch with the arm control, and similarly, uh, it would be affected if it was next to the uh, uh, assigned to the arm control because uh, this can be blended back and forth between being stretchy and non-stretchy. So let's say soft blend point and elbow point times one hundred divided by root scale and pin is equal to bone len and actually now I can just copy that there put original expression in brackets times 1 minus pin p plus pin times pin p and evaluate that. So pin is equal to 1 at the moment and you can see what we're getting. So if the distance is uh, less than the bone len, this isn't actually evaluated so it's just returning the bone length and you can see that here it's just returning the length of the bone. And that's quite nice. Okay. So we haven't actually got our slide working yet, and that's the next thing we're going to work on. We haven't included that. And the slide is going to be the hardest thing to include because we want the slide to be able to interact with uh, the stretching and the pinning, uh, which uh, is n not difficult once you see it, but initially to get it working um, was, was quite hard. Okay, so again, let's add another variable variable here, and our script is going to be quite large by the end of this. So this is going to be equal to chain len times 4.0 divided by 7. And I know the original bone length of this object sorry, the original position in parent space of this object is 30, but we want 4.7 there. And then times slide p, and that allows us to actually control this effect, the, the slide p value. So now our script is going to get quite long. If slide p is less than 0, then we want to redefine the slide value slide is equal to chain length times 3.0 divided by 7 times slide p. So where do we actually place this in our script? We're going to place it in the first expression here. So this is going to be a plus slide. When we do it over here it's going to be a negative slide. 
So, uh, actually, I'll, I'll, I won't talk about this. What happens immediately? I'll set it up over here, and then we can talk about it. So, slide is equal to chain len times four point zero divided by seven times slide p. If slide p is less than zero, redefine slide. So it's equal to the chain length times 3.7 divided by 7 times slide p. Now over here what we want to do is actually say minus slide. So if we evaluate both of these and start playing with our slide value, oh, we need to take off pinning first. You can see it working now. So what's happening? So let's assume the slide value is equal to minus 1, a full value of minus 1. So initially we're evaluating slide here, but then we come down to our condition and we see that yes indeed slide is less than 0. So redefine this to be chain length, which is 70, multiplied by this fraction, which allows us to work with the original bone size, multiplied by slide p, which is minus 1. So all in all, this adds up to minus 30. So we get down here, and you can see what's happening is we have our bone length, and what, this is equal to minus 30, so it's plus minus 30, and this is going to be equal to 0 then. Over here, again if it's minus, uh, minus uh, 1, we evaluate it uh, initially, or we define it initially as chain length times 4.0 divided by 7 times slide p. Come down here, we need to redefine it. So again, it's equal to minus 30. But when we come down here, it's bone length minus minus 30. And the original bone length here is equal to 40. So we're going to get 40 plus 30, which is equal to 70. And that's the original chain length. So that means we can actually slide this all the way down to zero. And you can see when we get to minus one, this nub here in parent space is equal to 70. That's the length of the chain. And when it's equal to a full value of one, the same thing happens, but now uh, the lower arm is at 70 and the wrist is at zero in parent space. Okay, so that's not us finished. Um, this slide value doesn't work with our stretching. Well, it doesn't work properly with our stretching. If we move this out and try and slide this, now you can see the slide doesn't go all the way back and it doesn't go all the way forward. And if we go back to frame zero, we haven't included anywhere that our sliding should be um, calculated in our pinning calculation. So we put this pinning up to 1, even though we want, might want to slide the arm back down here, nothing happens because uh, the entire original equation is being overwritten by this uh, section at the end which is appended to it. Appended to it. That's the sort of linear interpolation that we're doing. So we have some work that we still need to do. Um, and we'll do that in the next video.